Let me introduce you to not only one of my friends, dear friends, one of the heroes of many of those fights, one of the leaders of the remarkable stand at Standing Rock. From the Indigenous and Environmental Network, my dear brother, Dallas Goldtooth. I'm just uh, filling out my uh, deposit slip for my uh, George Soros check. Hi, everyone. Uh, Dallas Goldtooth here. Uh, I'm the Keep It In The Ground campaigner for the Indigenous Environmental Network. Uh, how are you? I have to say, I greet each and every one of you with a good heart. And I have to apologize because I can't be there right now to join you. But I know that each and every one of you are beautiful because this movement that we're a part of is beautiful. So keep on rocking with your beautiful self. Let's get into this. The fight to keep fossil fuels in the ground was born out of an indigenous struggle to end oil development in the Amazon and in the Arctic and now has blown to this global movement to stop fossil fuel projects across the planet. In this movement, we saw in full force in the fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline in the homelands of the Ocheti Shakoin people, also the Standing Rock Sioux Nation. That fight against Dakota Access Pipeline's parent company, Energy Transfer Partners, was and continues to be a fight that has invigorated and inspired thousands of others to step up to the plate and hold ourselves accountable for our addiction to fossil fuel regimes. Regime. The fossil fuel regime. There you go. That's the word. We are now seeing dozens of communities stepping up to the plate across this country, taking action, often being led by indigenous leaders, and that's something amazing to see. Now, we know this fight to build a more sustainable, better world is a multifaceted struggle. And one approach is to see and advocate for a just transition towards 100% renewable energy based on real community solutions. And another approach, which we're talking about here, is to keep our governments, our communities, our municipalities, our tribes from locking ourselves into more of this tyrannical beast that is called the fossil fuel economy. And the only way, the only proper way to accomplish that goal is to stop all new coal, oil, and gas projects, period. <laughs> to stop the fossil fuel industry while Trump is in office merely means that we're going to have to organize better. We're going to have to be braver, and we're going to have to take bolder action. The first thing that uh, Trump did when he came into office was to approve the Keystone XL and Dakota Access Pipelines. And now, now, he wants to uh, get, get access to more of our sacred sites and access to offshore waters for more drilling. It's bananas. But year after years of fighting and winning in this struggle to keep fossil fuels in the ground and uh, stop the Keystone XL pipeline, we're not backing down. We're standing up. So I'm going to ask you to stand with us, to help us in this fight against Keystone XL pipeline. Join communities, tribes, ranchers, and farmers to make the promise to protect. The promise to protect is a commitment to join these communities along the proposed route of the Keystone XL pipeline if and when the time comes. You can check out more information at nokxlpromise.org. Now, I want to introduce our next speaker here. Um, she is a magnificent woman, a, a beautiful human being, um, and a close, dear, dear friend of mine. And I don't have, I don't know the proper words to explain how vital her voice is to this movement and how powerful her voice is for all of us to hear. So I want to ask you to give a round of applause and a show of appreciation for my good sister holding it down in southwest Louisiana in the fight against the Bayou Bridge Pipeline, Sharif Ointland. <laughs> 